Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode. This is 425 of um, Creatives Ignite. Sorry, uh, we wanted to say Sun Recharge. I said that for so, so, so many uh, years. I wanted to have Ashley come on. Ashley has done uh, all of the scheduling for me for years and years and years. And I had wanted to do this at some point. I said, anytime, Ashley, in the summer, after the summer, in whatever. But we only have one more episode. So I was like, could you maybe choose a week that you can do it? <laughs> and so she said, um, this one would be good. And so today is actually Mario's birthday. So happy birthday, Mario. And so Mario has decided or has agreed to ask some questions to be the question asker. And so he can ask um some approved, maybe some not approved questions for um, me and Ashley, and then we'll bring up some other people. And if you want to answer some questions, I have some general questions I'd love to ask just the community. So we'll do this for a little bit, just because Ashley's played such an important role for me in keeping the podcast going. And so I just thank you, Ashley, so much for all the work you've done. Well, thank you, Diane. Um, even an encourager needs some encouragement every now and then, right? <laughs> That's right. For for sure. Okay, Mara, you want to ask some questions? I'm going to ask some questions. Uh, Ashley, it's very nice to meet you finally. Nice to um, meet you too. We've been emailing for a, a few years now. Mm -hmm. um, so first thing I'm going to ask you is, how long <laughs> have you been working with Diane I have been working with Diane for 10 years. She was my professor before um, I started working for her with D uh, Design Recharge. Um, she had kind of mentioned something about it, um, but then um, it was right as I had graduated and I just said, well, what about this? You know, I, I kind of pursued her about it after she had casually mentioned it. So, and right. that was 10 years ago, I guess. but. Ashley has two degrees. You could ask her about that. <laughs> Dan, do you want to do you want to ask the questions? No, nope. go ahead. <laughs> what are your two degrees in, Ashley? Um, I have a degree in journalism and from Auburn University, where um, Diane graduated from, and then I have a degree in photography and a degree in graphic design from. University of South Alabama, where Diane teaches. Oh, right on. I'll, I'll, I'll say it so that Oracle. so that Diane doesn't say it. So I'll just say War Eagle. And there you go. Because <laughs> I know Diane's going to say it at some point. War Eagle. Um, you guys are very, very. Hey, look, I wore my beaver shirt. There Mario it is. got me this shirt. So <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to wear it for his birthday. And then I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> anyway, keep going. So Ashley, um, I know that you're irreplaceable. Diane has mentioned it many times to me. Um, so what is it that you do for Diane that helps her do what she does? So Diane says that all the time and I don't believe it's true. And what I tell her is I believe I could train my dog to do this job. Um, and my dog would probably do a better job than I do. Um, but I think what Diane values is the, and this is what she always values, like across the board with people is the relationship that we have that um, like we can talk together, pray together, that she can trust me. I think that's more what she values. I, um, I contact guests, get them scheduled for the show and for test runs, um, make sure they have some um, information that they need ahead of time. And that's it. So really anybody could do it. <laughs> I think if you could train your dog to do it, mm -hmm. then you should, because that would be a totally different career path mm -hmm. and you'd make billions of dollars. Um, all right, Diane, what makes Ashley so irreplaceable? So she does do, she does pray with me or encourages me when I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't think I could keep going, but she she thinks it's super easy, but I've had other people do the job she has before she did it and they did not do it 
as well. So it may be really easy for Ashley. Ashley would be like, let's get the next six months done. And and she does it. She'll do it like in a weekend in the like as she's picking up the girls, she'll like do it on her phone. Bling, everybody's done and she can schedule it out. And it's terrific. And I think that that is just. It helps keep me on schedule and and I've been such a terrible uh, at some points. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's next. And she's just really the calm. It, when I'm stormy, she is like the calm. And she just remem- she reminds me of she'll ask the hard questions. She's like, well, what does it do? What do you do? You get out. Of, do you get something out of it, Diane? And I'm like, I do. I still get something out of it. She goes, sorry, I'm like focusing problems. Um I mean, this time it's really my camera and not my <laughs> brain, um, although I didn't take my medicine. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> um, it's in my hand with my other oh, no. uh, things that I needed to take um, <laughs> at lunch. <clears throat> but anyway, she's just she's kind of a joy, but she's also very realistic. And she. She's she's just, uh, you know, what you want friends who will tell you. Yeah, you can get that done or like, no, there is no way you're going to get that done. You know, not like being mean, but just being realistic. And and Ashley is great at encouraging, but she's also realistic. And she's like, really, you think you can you can do that? I, I think that might be too much. Or she comes to Creative South and I'm um, not every year because she has to do it on. It, she has a weird schedule because her husband works in the he flies a helicopter in the oil fields or whatever. And so he's a week on a week off. Right, Ashley. Mm -hmm. And so she has to do it when she can only come when Drew's at home, not when Drew's flying. Her kids are not old enough to stay by themselves. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) so anyway, so then it um, so she comes and she always helps me a ton at Creative South as well. And she's just a huge encourager. But there are other people that are encourager, but she really is smart and she's funny and I don't know. She's just the best. I couldn't have done it this long without her for sure. Just say thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Ashley, if you ever want to just turn the tables, just start complimenting Diane and she'll just start shrinking back down. Oh, I have, well, I have a whole list of compliments. Oh, there you go. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll do that. Cringers. uh, And a few. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, you guys have been doing this for a decade, which is crazy to me. It's it's awesome that you guys have been doing a podcast for for ten years. Um, what are some of your highlights, Ashley, uh, over the years? Give me just give me three highlights for you over the years um, of the show, or or even just working with Diane. Well, um, like when I think back to maybe guests that have really stuck with me, is that kind of what you mean? Sure. By, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, well, um, I like the mix. Like I feel that Diane has kind of an eclectic mix of guests. And so that's one of the things I love. Um, one was um, Amaryllis Henderson. She is a watercolor artist and um, I had never been introduced to her work. I have one right there. Yeah, and um, I have that, that one. one. Um, and so like I still I was introduced to her and now I'm like a devoted follower of her. Um uh one of the groups of guests that was like an aha moment for me um was Jen and Amy Hood. Um and it wasn't it was just like them sharing their workflow and how they kind of use things that made their business side really efficient. And um, then, um, oh, Joey Ellis and Leaky Timbers. Um, and that's something that I can share with my kids. So he has um, Muppets that he um, does cartoons with. And it the sense of humor is just like off the charts. And my kids were crying laughing after um, watching his videos. So, but I mean, there's so, there's so many. Um, And I liked, you know, not just like hearing about an artist's uh, way that they work or them sharing process kind of tips and hints and tricks, but then also business related stuff. And then um, 
uh, kind of mental health even, you know, and I feel like that's a really broad range of topics, but, um, they're really relevant, you know, um, and I, I'm not necessarily in the strongly in the design community, but it all still works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Diane, I know you've had many, many, many moments. And if I let you, you'd probably have a moment for each show, um, because that's who you are. Uh, but what have been some of your, your favorite milestones of the show over the years? Well, I think in the beginning, well, I thought about a few that were just funny and I'm just going to one. I know I've shared this before with Ashley at five years or at right at five years. I remember where I was when I was talking to Ashley on the phone and I was walking around this little park near my house and I was like, I don't know. Should I keep going? And she's and she like that hard answer, like, well, you know, does it still do something for you? And and I can see growth for me. I can see how I've learned from people and then I've implemented things in my design work, in my process, in my mindset. And so in business skills, things like that. So that's been good. But um, I remember one I used to have my mic like this. This is wrong, people. It's supposed to be like this. See, it sounds better like this than it does like this. And that was a milestone. I was like, oh, I have no <laughs> how to use my mic now. So now I have a stack of books that I, I have my mic on and I know how to use my mic. That was a milestone. For many, many years, I was using it incorrectly. <laughs> what? So let, let's let's talk about your like, I know that was milestones for, for you, like doing the show, but like um actually had some specific guests like give me your top mm. three guests that you've you've had and i know it's like hard to choose from your children but please just, just <laughs> mario find... mario and mario how well, about that i mean besides the obvious choice <laughs> someone know, besides, else the less yeah. the lesser the lesser favorites please um you know i loved i know amy's here i loved have been able amy lyons has been the longest she's going to come on at the end she's uh i have a list of our uh the w- way people are going to pop in and amy just being able i love i mean I, everybody there's so many people that i've had and i <laughs> do love all those people but i've learned different things at different times so um but Amy being able to give her a stage to share her stuff and she has changed. She has grown her illustration style. Just um, I guess for me, being able to see somebody through and go through, you know, like see how she's grown and um, see how I've grown. Right. But but just being able and then giving her a stage to be able to show that I think is really cool. So. So I don't want to pick anymore. Amy's the only guest. So Amy, congratulations, everybody else. No, I mean, there's so many I couldn't. <laughs> like I, um, I, well, I know, I, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm it's just, just really difficult to. Okay, I mean, let me ask it. Yeah. Let me ask a different way. Let me ask a different okay. way. What were some of what? What were? Give me two of your most surprising guests mm. in in any way. How about way? the ones that I was the most afraid of? Sure. Okay, Robin too. Landa, I was really afraid of, but she's awesome. She's the sweetest, nicest why, lady. But why, were I you, think why were you afraid of her? Because she's written so many books and I am not that smart, maybe. And I was just really intimidated by by her, but she's she puts her pants on like I do, you know, one leg at a time. And um, um, another was Todd Henry, I guess, because these were writers. I was like, oh, my gosh, I got I mean, I have a ton of Robin Landa books. Um, and uh, I think with Todd Henry, I was just, I was expecting, I don't know, something else. And he was great. He, that was an early on, he was, he is the accidental creative, that podcast, or, and he's written that book. And I don't know why my hair's so funny. So, so sorry. Well, it wouldn't be a show if your hair wasn't. wasn't I know. It, well, it was, re- I had it in a, well, anyway, <laughs> whatever. The end. (laughs) Move on from my hair. (laughs) Let's move on from the hair. Um, Okay. So Design Recharge, original title. Uh, Creatives Ignite, current title. We may may have another title by the end of this show. No, no, no. Um, (laughs) 
So I'm going to, I'm going to first ask Ashley, what, what has, um, and you, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, but what's, what has being a part of the podcast and listening and, and just being, being in, in the mix of it, um, done for your creativity? You said you're not really in the design community, but you are creative. So what, what, what has it done for you in, in your creativity and in your career? It kind of broadened my horizons. I feel like, especially where Diane and I live, we live in a smaller area. And so our exposure to um, a lot of things is kind of almost like being in an echo chamber and you're seeing uh, or exposed to a lot of the same things. But then when your horizons are then stretched across the world and, you know, at the very least, the design community of the whole United States, then um, I'm being exposed to like different ways of doing things, different looks, different ideas. Um, Drew, and I think his name is Paxa, um, oh, yeah. is from the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. And um, his style is like so funky and um, like chunky is I don't really know how to funky and chunky yes it's funky and chunky but I love it and um he does videos that I use every single Sunday at church in my children's um Sunday school so he illustrates for Saddleback kids for their little shorts and I would have never known anything about that um if I hadn't been on design recharge um and been exposed to you know just something different I think that's a good one he was. He was great. I met him at Creative South. Mm-hmm. So, Diane, what? Let me. Let me. I'm going to ask you the same question, and and then we'll just we'll start transitioning to your your audience and having people come up. Um, what What has it done for for your creativity? And I think uh, I'll, I'll I'll preface this to say, you know, obviously, you are wildly inspired by everything because of your ADHD. Um, so uh, over the years, where, what do you think ha- it has done for, for your creativity? I know it's done a ton for your contact list and your friends. Oh list. yeah. But like, um, but I have, like, I use Maddox Schuler's fonts and I um, like Colt, I've used a bunch. And then I've used Jason Carnes fonts and I've used Dustin's brushes to make uh, Victor in the room. And so I feel like it's this, it's like a quilt, you know, it's all these different um, memories and how they're pieced together. I um, draw better robots because of people. um, And I just feel like it is pretty varied. I think Ashley's right on the mark there, but like Doc made that poster, the Hopscotch Festival. He's going to come on the next one. This is a new one. If you guys notice, I cleaned a little bit, but this is Will's uh, Star Wars one. It's really cool. I wanted to hang it. This is Kendrick Kid uh, did that one. And then Scotty Russell and uh, Jason Craig did this one. That one's Amaryllis. You know, it's just like I get to. I don't know. Uh, I get oh yeah I don't know you know I thought it was Star Wars whatever Doc I am Galact Gal I don't even know how to say that Galact Galactic you know Galactic yeah. anyway um yeah <clears throat> I don't know I'm uh, that Will's like you don't have to buy that Diane and I'm like no I like the buttons that are neat. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, but it's not really your style. But I said, but I'll hang it up on my wall at school. And then I like hanging up things that are not, you know, things that I could do or would do. Um, And he's like, okay. (laughs) I love how Will tries to not sell me the things that I'm trying to buy. Um, It's from him. Great sales technique. (laughs) Um, But like Will and Brian White have done Prayer for Designers and um, I've been missing that one a bunch because I go to bed too early. Um, but it's, you know, there's just so many people that I've met, I guess. And it's the people who come every week. So Amy and I know when Paul's late because he's eaten his lunch, he's on here twice, you know. And so it's always nice. And a- Adrian's here all the way from uh, Ireland today. And, you know, it's just it's just fun to like I've never met Chris Dangyo, but I would love to if you want to come up. Chris later. I'd love to pop you up. 
Um, it's I just I do like meeting lots of people, but I do feel like I hope people feel like I'm just somebody they can call or talk to and ask a question and I'm not scary. Hopefully. Like sometimes Mario looks a little scary, but he's not scary. I guess it's my thing though. It's my thing. <laughs> yeah. It's not my thing. <laughs> Ashley can be scary too though. Like, Whoo, I've seen her yell at her kids. Whoo. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> don't don't be airing out Ashley's dirty laundry. That's not nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think she would tell you that. <laughs> like Diane said, things haven't always been easy or I think like sometimes there have been walls or kind of hoops that she's had to jump through and the hoops have been on fire. And um, she um, mentioned a word to me one time and it's grit. And I feel like it applies to her as well. Like um, I think a lot of people would have gotten to some of those roadblocks and been like, you know what? Um, I'm doing this for free. And so I, I think I'm just going to step back. Um, and in, instead, she kind of just pushed harder at that point. And I really do feel like she is an encourager. And she taught us as students about superpowers. And that's for sure. And I think she knows that that's like one of her superpowers that she's channeled into this community. And um she talks about like kind of in her mission statement about inspiration and interaction. And what I see there is like connection. Like that's something that's super important to her. And so she built a community where other people could have that. I feel like, um, like in the moment that we're living in thing, people are really disconnected and she's been able to connect a community throughout the world. Um, you know, just for free. Like she just like, this is a mission. This is, uh, she had a purpose and she stepped out there and kind of fulfilled her purpose, even when it was hard. Um, so that's the thing that, um, I'm so proud of you for, for 10 years of like standing in your purpose, even when, um, it wasn't easy. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I couldn't have kept going though, if you hadn't helped me. <laughs> I wanted to ask everybody. So when you come up, I'm going to bring you up. I have um, a couple questions. So I want you to tell who you are, what you do, where you live. And then just for my knowledge, I want to know when you started listening or watching. I know Paul and I've had this question. I didn't know anybody didn't. I didn't really know anybody watched or listened that wasn't live. I always feel like anyway. Um. And that was another milestone. I remember the whole episode or half of an episode I did. I was like, my mom didn't even show up. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, I guess. And I had I know I had forgotten to hit not record. I had forgotten to hit out of test mode or whatever it's called. I can't even like I was like, oh, my gosh. And Amy and a bunch of other people had waited for 30 minutes for me to like, I don't know what's her, but okay. She's going to wait. She, I mean, Amy's not like sitting there like this. She's doing her work, you know. Thank goodness Amy's my Amy's my friend. Um, and then all of a sudden, 30 minutes later, I start talking. But I had already done the whole thing that I was going to do by myself. Anyway, uh, that was a funny milestone. Okay, so here's the questions. And if you need these questions, they're also on the show link today, which I'll put up there. Um, but it's, do you work alone as an entrepreneur or are you a sole creative in a larger company? And then a memorable moment for you. You don't have to answer all these, but you can answer some. Um, why do you regularly tune in? How did you find the show? What Have you learned something from an episode that you implemented? And then how has this community played a role in your career or business? And then what would you like to see next? You could answer one of those or all of them or whatever, but we're going to pull up Van. I think it's Van. Van, there's Ashley. Ashley Van, you already know Mario. So. Hello. Can okay. So tell who you are, where you are, what you do. And then I'll ask, you can answer another one of the questions. Okay, go. I am located in Portland, Oregon, uh, in the upper Northwest corner of the United States. And um, I'm an identity coach and a community facilitator. Um, I think that's what you needed. Uh, 
there are a few things that I that have already been sort of stated and shared in terms of like um, those questions, but I mostly want to say that um, you know I really love learning about creative, like the way that creative spirited people um, think and how they work and how they live. And you have such an amazing range of guests on the show. And so there's just a lot of variety. And um, so there's no shortage of learnings and inspirations. And and I just love the way that you um, are able to put people at ease and um, also make space for what I have a soft spot for, which is um, everyday heroes. You know, people who, um, you know, have are doing like beautiful and wonderful things in the world, but they don't have a platform for spreading their message. Um, and so, yeah, um, I think those were the questions that I wanted to answer for you. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, thanks, Van. Yeah. I appreciate it. And you've been, pardon? I said, you're welcome. Okay. Well, I appreciate you coming so many and to so many and to being on and for sharing your goodness. And I appreciate you. I mean, I I was one of those people who didn't, had never spoken before um, in a, on a public platform. And so you gave me my very first opportunity, what, what, two years ago um, during a snowstorm, no less. So, (laughs) and it was the first time that I ever got to, um, be able to share this new thing that I was doing, which was coaching, um, having moved away from doing design and, um, brand strategy for a while. So, um, I'll, you know, I really greatly appreciate your friendship and, um, and just want to, yeah, keep hearing you or like you doing, like watching you do what you do. Um, because it is very much needed. Thanks, Van. Love you. Love you. Okay. Love you. Oh, you look very mean today. Are you in a bad mood? <laughs> there you go. There's the smile I was hoping for. But you're muted. Is today your first day on Zoom? I'm just kidding. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, that's that's the 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 wrestling with technology phase. Uh, it looks like I'm angry with small children, but it's mostly just <laughs> myself. <laughs> oh, well, that's OK. Um, OK, so tell them who you are, what you do, where you live. Uh, my name is Doc Reed. Uh, I am a senior product designer living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, the, the, the product design is what the day job is with insurance and things of that nature but uh illustration and and design uh poster making image making photography like those are all the things that that i do (laughs) when uh i punch out of work so and you draw really good he drew this poster thank you you can see yeah i mean you have lots of other drawings as well you're amazing with people okay so um but you work from home now. Yep, work remotely. This, yep, uh, work remote here in uh, downtown or South Charlotte in Matthews from my frog uh, over the garage. Uh, frog? Front, room, front room over garage is what that oh. sh- acronym for. Uh, I learned that mm-hmm. as a designer working on floor plans for construction company in one of my first in-house uh, design experiences. I was like, what is this? What is this frog room? I was like, oh, it's a front room over garage. Well, that's fancy. You got a garage. I came to yeah, work right? with a stick on my on my <laughs> car today. And my one of my students was like, I put a limb off of your car today. And I was like, I didn't see it. You know, it was dark when I got here and I don't see that high, I guess, you know, so whatever. Yeah. He's like, I pulled a big limb off of your car and we had tornadoes this morning. I mean, I didn't have a tornado. Me and Ashley are safe. OK, Doc, um, you've watched for a long time. Sorry about the fur fuzziness. Um, do you remember when you started watching? Uh, I was trying to remember uh, looking over the questions and I want to I want to say it's been at least six years um uh i i know well let me say that yeah it's been at least six years because i moved to charlotte in six years and that was one of the 
the first times I, I was able to share here. So um, I Lenny Terenzi tends to be like an entry point for a lot of communities. And I, I want to say like, you may have been interviewing him. And I was like, I'll check out this interview, see what Lenny's rambling about today. And uh, sort of, it may have been an introduction. I know that was how uh, it, it worked for some other communities, but I know I met you at Creative South and just immediately felt like I had uh, a big sister and uh, immediate friend. And so that, that was, that was definitely like, Oh, this is awesome community that, you know, so um, but yeah, I don't have a, a pinpoint unfortunately. So that's okay. Um, do you have, cause you've watched a lot. You, you show up like Amy does. I kind of know when you're on vacation. Um, what do you have a, a memorable moment? Man. Um, a lot of times it, I don't have like a, a standout other than just sort of the, the community aspect of what you've built and, and things of that nature, just being able to bring people and stories uh, that resonate with different aspects and different parts of my life. And I've, I've heard that repeatedly from people, you know, in passing and talking about things where um, <laughs> it's sort of like Sunday morning sermons where you're just sort of like, I don't know if that sermon was for anybody else, but it was like a hundred percent for me. Like there's, there's things that happen when, when guests will come on and it's kind of like, Oh, that was for me. Um, and, uh, it, it seems like that happens quite a bit when, when I've been talking with people and there'll be certain things that, uh, like Mario's just sort of nailed me to the wall. I'm like, yeah, I really, I need, I need to he be does better that about to me th too. And it's good. And we need people like that in, in our lives. Uh, even if we're scared, of, <laughs> scared of, of them and the, the accountability. Um, but, um, like, but you've met with Mario after be one-on-one. -on yes, one. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not and like you're that like, scared of Mario. No, he's a, he's a teddy bear, but he's 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 a grizzly te teddy bear. Like this is this is taking a turn for for the better, I think. And I it's like happy this. birthday, Mario. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, that that sort of like what what Ashley was saying, just like the the people that you've been able to champion and share your platform has been exhilarating for me as like an example of like trying to share more stories of people in like the Charlotte community. You have been a, a huge influence on like trying to find local talent in the Charlotte area to champion and sh to share like AIGA's platform with and it, it you know as opposed to hey we're just gonna do the everybody that's doing the design talk circuits like let's just pull them in and they'll give the same talk that they've given to you know every you know other you know speaking engagement it's it's nice to be able to look local and find people that are making a difference or that you see as you know maybe you know head and shoulder above you know the the rest of the community to encourage them to give them a, a boost of confidence to, and and let them spread their wings on a smaller stage and build up some of that confidence to be able to like okay I maybe I do have something to say that mm. I had discounted in my own self and um so that that has been sort of a goal that you indirectly have been responsible for for planting in in my my life and my role and involvement in the the North Carolina community. So, well, John Ingalls has that. a question, and I'm happy. What? Um. Oh, hey, Hannah. Um. Can you tell John Ingalls what kind of camera you have? Me? Yeah. Oh. Uh, he didn't comment a... on me and Ashley's. Me and Ashley's clearly suck. So um, if you want to suck like me and Ashley, I don't know what Ashley's is, but mine is a Logitech um, HD 1080. And Mario's is a Fuji X-T4. Okay. Mine's a, a Sony uh, Alpha 7. Alpha um, Romeo? I'm just kidding. Tomato. So basically, if you want to look like Doc and I, you have to way overspend on your camera. 100%. Yeah, this is this is the the shooter that like when I go out on shoots, I will 
uh, pull this off the tripod and actually use it as a camera, not just a web. So uh, this is my my digital uh, three piece interview suit, uh, as, as somebody described it. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so. Well, me and Ashley are just rolling on the low key. I think mine was 60 bucks, maybe, you know, or 40 before COVID. It like went up to like 85, <laughs> right. 90 during COVID. But okay. One day we'll get Diane and a proper camera. And- <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, I, I'm on a 2013 computer today here, people. So <laughs> I'm just happy it started. I guess it'll be time to upgrade. Luckily, I don't have to pay for that one. Okay. Well, Doc, you got any, you want to see, you got anything you, um, what, what you want to see next? Oh man, that's a, when I was reading that question, that was one thing that I have never really been good about, like forecasting or dreaming about possibilities. Yeah, but is there anybody that you'd like to see or you oh, like? interviews and conversations? Um, sure. I, I've. You you do pretty good about this, but I would love to see more of the like where are they now? It's like I interviewed somebody like ten years oh. ago. Like, you know some of the things that have happened, and you know sort of like what Van like that pivot that that she went through into the the consulting side of things. Like maybe doing a follow up, you know, five six years later, be like, hey, how are things going? Like. One Everybody of the funniest- loves that idea. <laughs> I okay. like that. I wrote it down. Good. Ashley, we're doing that one. That'll be a series. Where are they now? <laughs> Sweeping at McDonald's. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Keep going. I was going to say, Jason Craig would be a good one to to hit with that because he made a comment at Creative South a couple years ago about like, yeah, I had like, this was the goal that I was trying to hit financially for the year. I hit it and I unplugged everything. I took vacation for the rest of the year. And he's like. <laughs> but then he like, started working on cruise ships and stuff. It was crazy. Well, he was he he was like, yeah, that was the dumbest thing I have ever done or said or suggested type of a thing. So like those little like pieces, I think, make for amazing stories because there's a lot to gleam from several different aspects of, you know, mindset to execution to, you know, what would you do differently? Would you completely overhaul it or, you know, things of that nature? So, but but yeah. Okay. Where are they now? Okay. Awesome. (laughs) And I'm super thankful that you're my friend and thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for doing this. And Ashley, thank you so much for being an invisible backbone uh, of the the operation. So it's good to put a face with a name. You Um, might have seen her at a Creative South, but she is low key. I am. Yes. Yeah. I if I did, I didn't connect that you were the uh, creative. Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. I stood out at Creative Ignite like a sore thumb. I mean, at a uh, <laughs> Creative uh, South. South. I was the only one in color. I was like, oh, I didn't know. Everybody else is in their oh, black. Oh, where my black next? Black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. think everybody was in black, was it? That's a no. typical. Yeah. I mean, here, I'll put my hat on. So there's the, the hat and the beard. I know you got the, it. And the flannel. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's just one more step. Go bald, buddy. That's all. That's the other thing. I'm working on it. Don't, don't working do that to him. He's got good hair. <laughs> I know yeah. he has great. Why hair. do we always start talking about hair, Diane? Okay, okay. Well, we're now it's Brian White. Brian White, are you ready? Just a short memo. I do have to run in about 15. And I just realized, like two, I guess I think I realized it earlier, but uh, this is the second time I've been on the show on my birthday. So. Oh, really? Was it last year, the year before last? It was a year before last, yeah. Awesome. Well, Brian, Brian has been uh, played a big part in me as a designer and just as a good friend and as just a designer that prays and loves Jesus. And I've and Brian comes so often and maybe you can't come all the time, Brian. I don't expect I'm not taking role, buddy. I do know Amy Lyons comes the most. That's all I know. Yeah, Um, she beats she beats everyone. she, She beats everybody. But um. Can you tell them who you are, where you are, what you do? And then, and Mario, whenever you have to leave, you just um, thank you for coming and happy birthday. I'm Brian White. I'm in Lawrence, Kansas. I run Brian White Design. Um, I merged Triline Studios and Brian White Design together this year, which was basically the same thing, but like variety of stuff. But basically doing, um, started, you know, uh, dabbling in front page design like Shane Helm 
uh, back in my first website was 97. Uh, fast forward about 10 years doing UI work for um, UK companies and weird stuff. And then just a, a juggle of basic design. So um, focus. And you've done bra- Kickstarters. You've done yeah. courses. You've done, tell them what you're branding. You were going to say you do branding. and No, branding. no. Yeah. Focuses on branding UI and then uh, dabble in illustration whenever I can. And painting. You do painting. Yes. Yeah. That does not pay anything. So not much. So. But it's good to have those side things that keep you yes. recharged. It's a creative outlet for sure. Absolutely. So. Okay. So um, do you have a memorable moment or do you remember, do you remember how you found the show? Yeah. I met you in 2015 for my first creative South. So I did type fight, met a whole bunch of people. And then um, I think we met at the cannon or something like that outside. And, and then we just hit it off. And then it seemed like everyone that I met that you were friends with, I liked. So I thought this is, this is a good litmus test. You know, she can, she can filter the people for me. And so then <laughs> I think I jumped on too. I was talking, I was thinking about what doc was saying about Lenny. Cause Lenny was, had written a blog about creative South and I had felt very lonely as mm-hmm. a designer working at home and, um, you know, for so long and, and not really getting out into the community. And so um, even that weekend, it was just huge for me. And then that's why I've been watching the show too, is just connecting with other people um, in the variety. So it's like uh, just other people that I probably wouldn't cross paths with, with like add, add, add design, add, 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 Oh, another designer that I would never usually see, but, um, so yeah, it's been, been great. So yeah, your, your friends are my friends. So. That is for sure. Okay. So, um, do you have anything you'd like to see next or as a solopreneur, what's a struggle for you now that, I, cause you've readjusted what you've done and, and and you have done a ton of things. I, I always am inspired by all the things and you make great print making. I'm going to try to find um, some of this. Anyway, keep going. Do you have any anybody, anything that you'd like to see next or? Well, I, w- I was like going back to like some of the past people that have been on the show and, and Amy was actually one that I remembered. And I was just it was just cool because she's been on, you know, and she came on and and I had seen her work before. And it was just fun to see that process. But I think that it was really important for people to hear that it's consistency and small little pieces and being consistent and working hard and just continually working at it that you'll see progress, but you can't jump into design and be like super good right away. You have to test and fail and then shift. So my business, um, uh, the business mentor I've been talking with, kind of built that to where he said, build a system and go to work for it. So I've been doing that where it's like you, you know, you're making it up. A lot of people are making up how, how you're pitching stuff and whatever. But um, I've been thinking more about that after that as well. So I love that being consistent. It's like, yeah, I don't want to do that, but I'll do it. And if I do it every day for a couple of years, you're going to see like amazing changes. So, and sometimes I think that it's, if you if you really hate doing something, maybe then you can have somebody else do that thing so yeah. that you can spend more time not hating the things. Because, I mean, that's definitely how it's been. And I think having people who are also doing that and trying that and being willing to say, hey, this didn't work for me. This did. It is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm super thankful for you and your friendship. Um, just me too, Brian. I like it that you're not that you're not really a small talker too. like you're when we talk, we really talk and discuss. So that's cool. Yeah. Just shows your depth. You know, you, you have a, a deep soul. So thanks, Brian. You do too. We have, we have great conversations for sure. Yay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. D you watch longer than John. So thank you. 
not that I'm not going to thank John too, but um, okay. So tell D you start, you tell him who you are, where, where you are and what you do. Okay. So I'm I'm laughing so hard. I'm bogging up my glasses. (laughs) (laughs) I'm, I'm Diana Ingalls. I'm starting to switch to Diana because when people look up D Ingalls, it doesn't really help my cause. Oh no. You know what? That was what Ashley was like. D Ingalls when she did, this is when that happens. Like in English. Right. Because it's in anyway. So, yeah, yeah good job. I started it all. So I cultivate um, eco brands that make people feel good about buying a uh, product or service. I work a lot with um, sustainable materials and methods. And then John, myself and our son are co-founders of a brand called Wild Rooted. And we try to nurture people with nature with that brand. And then we give 10 percent back of the profits to the national parks and forests. I love that. Okay. And then you've been a designer and you worked for yourself for how many years? So I would say, honestly, probably like 30. I spent 27 of those years, um, probably not all 27, but for the most part, raising our kids while I worked out of a home studio. So I've been a designer of one for a long time. Yeah. All right. Okay, John, now you go. So I'm John Ingalls, and I do web development, primarily focused on e-commerce web solutions on like Shopify, Squarespace, that type of thing. And then like Dee said, I'm co-founder. I work uh, with Dee and Brennan to uh, build our Wild Routed brand. Cool. Okay. So the, you guys have, um, we did a, a, I mean, I've known D a long time and I got to meet you guys finally in real life and my glasses are so foggy that it looks like something's wrong with me so I'm gonna defog them maybe um okay so so um I think that because I remember you um we uh me and D were in the future together the future pro group and -hmm. that's how we got uh, to meet and then she's just a wickedly good designer but she's also really passionate about um eco-friendly and she was really pushing uh uh finding these vendors who were doing um you know algae ink or things that a lot of people other people weren't doing you were finding vendors you were using things you um embrace these hard challenges I think that these clients gave you and then you were like hey we could do better and then doing the whole well I mean you've had a gamut of in the time that I've known you there's been a lot so much growth you've done um I don't know like pitch things I can't remember what those are but they're like incubators right there have been a ton a ton of things that you've been able to do and then you and uh, John came on and then you guys started wild routed Kind of give them a little update on where that is as a brand and what y'all are doing. So Wild Rooted is um, in two years at a two year anniversary, and we're now in a couple stores here locally that are um, outdoor related, and we're starting to get a little bit of traction every year. And um, I think it's just like somebody said previously, it's just like you just like it was Brian, just be consistent and consistent and consistent. And I think we're going to have slow growth, but it's going to be solid growth. And we just keep remembering our focus for Wild Rooted is to nurture people with nature, try to use our social media channels and our YouTube channel to improve people's lives in a good way by bringing Mm -hmm. nature to them if they can't get to nature. Nature heals. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so do you... um have a memorable moment you've tuned in regularly both of you um and you're not in the same place i mean you're in the same city you live in the same house but you don't work in the same space Mm -hmm. so um do you have anything that you've learned that you've implemented or that you um a memorable moment so i've learned a lot of things that i didn't know that i didn't know um (laughs) I would say every time I tune in, I learn something that I can implement that day, but it's really hard to go back and remember everything. But um, I I remember listening to specifically Andrew Burnett's uh, 
talk. And it was really cool to see how he has a strategy for naming companies. Yeah. And then you guys got to utilize him for that. Yeah, we did. It was funny you brought that up. We didn't even talk about what we were going to discuss today. And Andrew Burnett's uh, podcast with him on was one that I had listened to also. It's not the first one I remember, but it's definitely very memorable. And we ended up using Andrew to help us with naming, which was really cool. Which is cool. Okay. Um, do you have, what would, would you want to see next? And I guess I need to start calling you Diana. It's just weird because I'm Diane. It's okay. Um, so for me, what I'd like to see next is um, to continue with what you're doing as far as like mixing um, art and design. I think a lot of people who are outside of our sector of the creative field don't understand that they both serve two different purposes. And when you have people who are in the art space or, and then people who are in the de design space, um, I think that's really really educating people to realize that they're, they're they serve two different purposes so if i had to niche down to something i'd really love to see um and i thought about maybe writing a book about this is there's a lot of um students out there who don't really realize what um the many facets of uh design that are available to you to go to school like service design which is also called human-centered design um uh, you know, art therapy, all these types of things. I, I think it would be cool if um, there was some sort of directory for those kids who are creative in high school to realize that you don't have, you don't have to choose being a graphic designer specifically. You can niche down into being a service designer where you're designing systems for say a healthcare provider, or um, you're getting people to think differently in managing change management. Chris says you should write the book. Mm -hmm. And Doc said, uh, you might have missed that one, but he said it, um, that he loved meeting meeting y'all and being able to um, be in power station with y'all was really awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. John, do you have anything you want to see? I, I, I don't want to completely lean on Doc, but man, the idea of that was bringing, a good idea, bringing back, right? Here's like, that's a cool idea, right? Yeah. To be able to bring people back that you haven't had on the show for a year or two or even three and just to do a follow up. Now, maybe not everyone's available, but that would be really cool. That'd be a neat yeah. one. What would you want to see or know about them? Just how they've pivoted? Yeah, maybe, maybe because you, you see the story of somebody up to a certain point, right? But then you don't hear from them. Maybe you don't, you're not, you don't keep in touch or whatever. Ever life kind of goes, life is getting behind us really quick, right? And Dee and I were talking about this the other day, the the amount of the struggles that you see every single day, and you get so focused on the tree in the forest, you don't take a step back to realize all the progress that you've actually made. And I think that'd be cool to see the progress or just the changes that have happened to other guests that you've had on. Yeah. I love Nothing that. Nothing necessarily idea. in particular, just an update, you know? Yeah, no, that'd, I that'd love that cool. idea. I love that idea. And I put in, they have the softest, I should have probably worn a wild rabbit. I wear wild rabbit shirts all the, every, every other day of the week, pretty much. I'm like, oh yeah, I wore my pink one on, uh, or I wore my yellow one on Thanksgiving. And then I wore the pink one the next day. I mean, they're really, what, really but cool. you honored, you honored I, this was a Mario's Mario. birthday, right? So yeah. the beaver, right. And yeah. I realized this morning I had these two pinch marks. Anyway, I thought, oh, I colored myself, but it's their bruises on my gums there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's like, don't show that. Oh my god, you got the flap or something. <laughs> like looking close. No, I'm just kidding. Ashley, uh, see, she's got her face like Will does, where it's um, no <laughs> response. I, miss Will. I, miss I know, Will. I know. He made a really cool poster. I it's kind of hard that. to see in the um very talented Mr. Nebraska. Oh, I know. Okay. Thank you guys. And I'm just glad you're my friends. And thank you for to being here and Coming to so many shows. And now you know who Ashley is. Hi, Ashley. Likewise. And, and I, like. I, I need to thank you for the introductions that you've made to all of the people. And most, many of these people are here. I mean, our, our network opened up significantly yeah, we love after you. meeting you. And I love y'all. I love it. Very yes. thankful for y'all. Well, we and appreciate I'm glad you. Kermit has his, has his legs crossed. 
<laughs> might be a little <laughs> PG rated, if not, right? Woo. So Chris actually edits all the podcasts now, thankfully. Something else I took off my plate, which is, was really hard for me um, to ask for help. And so um, I think that it, I'm very thankful that I have Ashley. I don't ever worry about things going out. And I think so that's a really big thing of trust. And it's the same way with Chris. So I just know that it, I never listened to them again. Um, I'm like, does the vid, does the song go out quick? Or And I'm like, that's like 10 seconds. I could probably listen to that. Um, <laughs> but you've made, hey, you've got your wild rounded hat on. I do. Way to go. See people. It's awesome. The link's up above. Um, anyway, so um, Chris, tell them who you are, where you are, what you do. Of course, I'm Chris Martin. I'm a podcast producer slash editor and a writer in Vancouver, Washington. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums up everything that I do. And you have your own podcast. I have my own podcast called Getting Work to Work. And I've been doing that for six years, not quite 10. But But you uh, have way more than way more episodes than I have. 640. 640 and he's had debbie clapper and paul and he's had john and d that was a great episode that was I'm awesome. just filling your guest list no 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 you had um you had people on before i had them on i'm stealing your guest list we steal from each other right <laughs> that's right <laughs> um chris is somebody who i uh text with every day he always asks me how my day goes and i'm honest with them and tell them when it's really bad or when it's um when it, sometimes it's like it was okay or it was good <laughs> but how was yours or yesterday he sent me a picture you can tell him what the picture was and then you could flip it up i don't up. remember what the picture it was about was. papyrus oh yeah it was like papyrus in the wild sighting and it was a dance academy in town Okay. And I said, somebody paid money for that. <laughs> and I texted back, my eyes are bleeding. <laughs> or I said, are your eyes still bleeding from this? Um, Chris, do you have a memorable moment um, or something that stood out to you that you're like, oh. For me, I was thinking a lot about this because I'm not someone that remembers a lot since I do edit a lot of the shows. And so for me, what I love is when you are really excited about someone and you're excited to have them on and you're nervous and you're sweating. And so I think the most recent one that that was memorable for me was Sandy Hester, where you were just so excited to have her on. And that was a great episode because you both had great chemistry, a great camaraderie, and it came through on the podcast as well. She went to Auburn. War Eagle. I'm just kidding. It wasn't why, but um, brought to you by Auburn. (laughs) Right. Cadillac Wilson (laughs) Williams for the whatever. I know he he's the whatever coach, the assistant head coach or something. But anyway, I love that guy. Okay, so um, Chris, what um, I'll ask you a harder question because it's not on the list, maybe. But I like what what is um. What's the hardest thing about editing my podcast? Okay. It's not going to be what you expect, but the hardest thing is the stupid screen share. There's like a lag between when you hit screen share and when it comes up. And so I generally have to create like a still frame to like cover the gap. And it's just kind of one of those annoying things that Zoom does when you're doing a screen share. So if we were just silent, you could just cut it? Well, it, it's not just that, but it, it, that would work. But at the same time, there's just this gap of black space. But then if you've got multiple guests, they show up as well on the on the side. So it's some, there's some weirdness. Yeah, I don't really not, know how to. It's not hard. It's, it's not something. But one of the difficult things is sometimes you, you'll go down a rabbit trail of like saying hi to everyone in the chat. And it'll just come out of nowhere. And I'll just be like, okay, she was just talking about something amazing. Oh, hi, Brian White. And then then you lose your trail. And so as an editor, I, I'm like, do I leave that in? Do I have a clean edit? You know, sorry, Brian White, I'm gonna delete you out here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's those kind of things where I'm I'm making those decisions of do I leave it in or do I 
or or do I just cut it out? And sometimes more often than not, I just leave them in because it's who you are. But then other times it's like, oh, that I don't want to remove from this point that was being made. So right. That that's a good point though. And um um my friend Jody Miller, she had sent me a whole bunch of these ADHD, like this couple, and they go back and forth. And one of the things was the he was asking her what these words were. And instead of like tidy, it was hiding up. And it was like when we don't really tie, we don't really put things up. We're just hiding things under the bed or whatever. Like that's how ADHD cleans. And then um, there was one about the roller coaster conversation or a Conver roller coaster or something. And I thought about, oh, yeah, I do kind of get off track and, you know, but maybe it's just. That's that's part of, I think, the the joy of the show is when you do go down those rabbit trails, because I would say nine times out of 10, they're actually good and and a, an important part of the conversation. It's, it's the one where you're just kind of like, I think you edit yourself, which takes it me out of the rabbit trail. And I don't know the fifth have, one at that point. I have a hard time connecting things because I lose my train of thought for sure. But I really, it, it, I don't know if I would do the show if it wasn't a live aspect. So you guys really do play a whole, a huge role for me in, in this. And I remember I was so defeated that one day when I thought nobody showed up, not even my mom. And, and then I realized I hadn't hit, you know, whatever. I can't even remember what the thing is that I hit. Um, but Broad- I've only had broadcast. to re-record what broadcast. Yeah. Broadcast broadcast webinar. Yep, that was it. I forgot to hit broadcast webinar. I did have to record um, uh, one. I had to record twice because I forgot to hit record. And in 425, that's pretty good. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever stopped not hit record? Uh, It's pretty obvious if I don't hit record because the little waveform doesn't work. So I, I have a more visual representation of what's going on, whereas in Zoom, you know, you don't. Yeah, it's a tiny little thing up yeah. in the left-hand corner. But then Amy Lyons will be like, hey, don't forget to hit record, Diane, which I'm very thankful. Amy, you absolutely are needed. Okay. Can Chris, I add just one thing please. for you? One of the things that I would love to see oh, yeah, tell that me. you do more of, and you're going to hate this idea, because exactly. I want more solo episodes about not just sharing like blobs, But I want you to share the struggles of what you're going through and how you're overcoming that because you do so much, you experiment with so many things that I think you're missing an opportunity to really dive deep into the struggle to the, I mean, you're really good at putting out in in your your brain, like the, the voices that are going on in your head, the dialogue, but I think letting us in on the struggle and how you're overcoming that would be a really good opportunity for us to learn from you as well. Okay. We'll have to talk about that, how I can make that work. We'll have to get with Ashley. She's doing all the scheduling. I don't know if that girl will get on. I'm just kidding. No, I, I like the idea. It's hard to... um. You do this really well on your podcast, Chris. He's got amazing, has an amazing book. You guys need to go listen to Getting Work to Work. It's awesome. Episode 640. It'll be like 1,020 next week because he makes like three a week. <laughs> um, only two. <laughs> only two. But he it ha- wrote a book and he is publishing it or he's uh, reading part of it on the podcast. And I'll just work on that. I'll have to work on it. So I see you, Hannah and um, Debbie and Amy and Morris and and the other Hannah, my Hannah, Hannah Wilson, not the Hannah. Is it my Hannah? Uh, But Hannah Wilson. Were you in school with Ashley? I don't know. I think maybe she says, yeah. Okay. Well, Chris, thank you. And thank you for editing this episode. Amy, you've spent, you got to be on on your birthday or on your birthday week. On your yes. birthday? It was on my birthday. On your birthday. Yes. And um in February. And I do know when you go on vacation because you text <laughs> me and tell me you can't be here. And um it does for me, it does feel like that um that y'all are here with me. And so it's nice to ha- for people to be able to see each other. Um, but can you tell people what you do, who you are, and where you live? Uh yes. 
well, and say I'm War eight. Eagle? War Eagle, yes, definitely War Eagle. Um, also went to Auburn at the same time as Deanne, uh, Diane, sorry. I have a friend named Deanne who went to Auburn with me too. But I didn't know, I, know Diane at the time, unfortunately. But fortunately, now I do. Anywho, I'm a graphic designer and illustrator in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, right now, I'm making snowflakes for a window display. Okay, and then you have worked alone as a creative but you're in a bigger company, but you're the, yeah, yeah. I, I am um, work in house, uh, but I'm the only designer. Um, and I do have a, uh, I work with a marketing team, but like I said, I'm the only designer. So I do have a team I can go to for feedback on stuff, but I don't have anyone who shares the workload with me. Okay. So what's been, cause you've, it's hard to say which one though, right? Like we've been here a long time, but, um, what was, what is a, memorable moment for you or is there something that you learned on a a design recharge or you know episode that you then implemented well um most memorable obviously had to be when i was on the ship of course (laughs) especially since apparently i'm your favorite no i'm just kidding um um you know i think what i enjoy most about this show and i think somebody just said it in the chat is i i like the live aspect of it i love coming Um, to the community and I love learning from a whole bunch of different types of people like obviously some of them are my friends that I've met and some of them um, like that I knew I met at Creative South or I knew before they came on to the show and other ones I have come to know from them being on the show and then probably meeting them at Creative South Uh, but it's it's just a great community and I, I get to have lunch with you every week so I know. I love that. There's there's a lot to learn. I I also like to learn from you. I like your rapid recharges. Um, And I I do think there's stuff that you you learn that you share with us. And I appreciate you being so open about that. Um, Your struggles and your successes and everything. So, um, yeah. Well, thanks, Amy. Do you want to see my really ugly Dolly Parton? Yes. Are you ready for the scary Dolly Parton? Ashley's I bet it's like, not scary, I don't know. but yes. Oh, no, it is. There she is. Okay, it is a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I like the carrots and the this, but the Dolly Parton is, whoo, it's a little. But it's little. a nice use of color. Yeah, mm, that's and a I great like, way I to like, say. I like the shading in the hair. My mom said I was listening or I was watching or I was whatever, responding to some comments and on Facebook. You know, my mom, she likes every, I mean, My cousins give her a hard time. I don't think she's here today. Let me make sure. (laughs) I don't think so. Anyway, well, no, no, she's not here. And um, she had a doctor's appointment. Anyway, she's excused. excused. She'll never figure out how to listen to it after. So she um, she said it was like it was like some of these things that were in the front, like these these, you know, I don't know. I like all those leaves. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, interesting. I was like, mom, that's what I say when. um. I don't know anything else good to say. I say, and just like, bless your heart, you know, kind of. Uh, <laughs> um, but I thought it, it was funny that that was her only word. She said, interesting. interesting. And I was like, man, if you if I'd put the Badali Parton up there, I get that with interesting. I just thought it was funny. It made me laugh. That is funny. So um, is there anything you would like to see as we I did think Doc's idea was really good. I would say that was a great idea. I and saw you I say like- that. I liked uh, I like Chris's idea too. I know you don't like it, but um, it's a good one. I just I really enjoy. I think somebody else said it, the mix of people that you have, and because like, I think even you know not everyone that you have on is is, is a designer, or is a creative in, in some way. But the what they have, what they say, and the things they have to talk about are useful. And I love I love seeing different people's processes and. Um, just I think there's something to learn from everybody's story yeah I do think everybody has a good story go ahead yeah like even if it's maybe you you don't find a takeaway that you can do but maybe it sparks an idea of something else that you know oh that might work for me for this or you tuck that away and you hear somebody else is complaining about something like oh I heard about this person and this is what they did and yeah it's you've built a really amazing community and i just i love hanging out every week and well you built it right there with me amy if you weren't there it wouldn't have been and you weren't 
typing in the chat, it wouldn't have been as fun. <laughs> well, I do think that coming in live is, is the best part. Um, because I've, I have, you know, I've watched the few that I've, a couple here and there that I've missed um, from the live shows, but it's, it's just, I miss, I, I'll be like with me and then like, oh, I want to type this thing in my hand. Nobody's there. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, I, I uh, am the same way. And I'm really glad. I think it is a little different, um, something that maybe sets it apart, but I think that oh, it, it is the it's the response. And I know Ashley asked me, you know, well, do you still get something out of it? And if it was just a conversation with me and somebody else, I still am getting something out of it. So it's still doing yeah. something for me, but I always like to share those bits. You know, I think that somebody else can learn something else. Just like doc was saying it, sometimes it feels like they're just talking just to me. Um, just like you're, if you're sitting yeah. in church and you're, you feel like, Oh my gosh, is the pastor talking to it? Anybody else? <laughs> this is for me. Well, yeah. Amy, um, how long do you think it, you do you think it's been since two thousand? I think it's been two thousand fifteen because I feel like I think it was maybe Brian who said that uh, Lenny was getting interviewed or something like that, and that's I think it was either Lenny or Mike, and I knew Mike because of Lenny, and I was getting ready to go to Creative South first time. So I was like, Oh, I want to hear more about that. Cause I'm so excited to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the other thing I love that those two communities like mix up so that a lot of the people that I hang out with here every Wednesday, I get to at least see once a year in person. Um, yeah. those who are able to make it. So. Yeah. So Lenny's was um, 2015 and I'm putting that, I mean, he's been on there a couple of times, but um but that one was yeah. that one. Um, anyway, thank you, Amy. Thank you for being thank you. in my world. And I'm my very favorite. honored, it's honored the, to be in your world. <laughs> I'm honored to be in yours. Well, Ashley, uh, I think we'll be able to, we'll close it off. Um, yes. And thank you, Ashley, for all you do behind the scenes. I know we no Diane couldn't do it without you. So thanks for supporting our, our friend. Thank you for sure. Well, guys, I know we went really long. My mom would be like, it's time to go. And it is because my bladder's about to explode. So um, I would, I what Paul said it in the chat earlier. We'll have to do a part two. We'll do a part two where it's just us coming together. And Ashley, I know it was probably uncomfortable to stay for so long and just be on screen. But I appreciate again, as always, you are such a great support. And thank you for being such a great encourager for me. Oh, and Diane, cheers to 10 years. This is, um, this is a milestone. Um, and just thank you for um, sharing your superpower with us. Well, I'm just glad to rub shoulders with all of y'all or elbows or whatever it is. Um, because it, we all create better when we're together and we learn from each other. And Amy have fun making snowflakes. Amy's really crafty. She does all kinds of really cool craft projects for her family. Amazing Christmas present, people. Oh, I got myself a Christmas present and I can do more now. I got myself a cricket. Oh, sweet. Can't wait to see. Okay. Okay. We will see you next week. (laughs) Next week is Melinda Livesey. She's going to be talking about process because the process that you have or somebody else has you can, you can actually take and adjust and use all these different things. So I'm excited. She's going to be ending the year um, and this 10th year, she's ending it with the taco process and I have ideas for next time. So um, Ashley, I'll talk to you soon because I have new ideas and Amy and everybody else. I'll see you guys next week. And Chris, Daniel, we have to get you on sometime. I want to talk to you so that I can see what you sound like. I've seen a picture of you. So now I just need to, uh, cause I want to, I want you to feel like you're part of it. And Brian Bundy, you too. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.